Hello USC fans, Connor Morissette and Chris Trevino are here on campus after another Trojan spring practice. The spring game is coming up on Saturday, Chris, one more practice before that Thursday. But they practice today, the team, and it's time for instant analysis. Good to be with you. How you doing? Good. It's a beautiful day, and this is the final Tuesday practice, and thank goodness it wasn't a 5.30 a.m. practice. We were greeted with a 2.30 a.m. or 2.30 a.m., <laughs> 2.30 p.m. practice. My brain's all scrambled up because I'm used to waking up early on Tuesdays for here, but the final Tuesday practice of spring camp. Yeah, 2.30 a.m. would have been a little too early, but let's get to the transfer portal opening today, and USC had no more unexpected entries that could change. Lincoln Riley was asked after practice, do you expect anyone else to enter? He said, ask me again in five minutes with a little smile. It was a joke. He said, we'll see, because I don't think in this day and age, even if you feel 100% sure that you're going to retain everyone, you can confidently say that just with the way the portal operates. The one player we didn't see come out to practice today, Chris, was Carson Tabaracci, the tight end, but we spoke with Zach Hansen, the tight end's coach, after practice, and he said that Carson is injured, so it doesn't look like a transfer is imminent with him. Again, of course, anything can happen in this day and age, but I think good day for USC. Didn't lose any more players. Yeah, but again, it's just one day. You never know what's going to happen after the spring game when, you know, roles are kind of settling in more and, you know, who's moving up, who had a good spring game, who didn't have a good spring game, things like that. So it was unique to have the spring portal window open on this Tuesday practice so we could see players like who is not there. And as you mentioned, Carson Tabarachi, the only one due to an injury per Zach Hansen. But it was interesting to have that timed up. But yeah, we, Lincoln Riley was asked about, does he anticipate any more defections, attrition throughout this spring window? They've had three so far right now. He said, yeah, as you said, you know, ask me again in five minutes with a laugh, but he did not anticipate many happening. Sounded like a couple could still come off the board for USC, but he was not expecting a ton like you saw in the winter period with like 19 guys that entered the portal. So he said a few, those are his words, so maybe two or three uh, that will leave again for, leave USC, will open up some more scholarships. But yeah, it's an interesting time for USC, wrapping up spring camp, got the spring game, and then trying to fill some of those holes in the roster that they need to fill. Absolutely. Getting to practice, not a ton of observations from me, but Malachi Crawford, we saw again him make a small mistake in a rep with Deuce Robinson. He caught a ball and was running towards Crawford, and Crawford didn't take a good angle, and Doug Belk was on him like we've seen him consistently in camp. We can only watch for about 15 minutes every practice, but we've seen Belk get on Crawford a few times. The I believe he'll be a redshirt freshman because he was hurt last season. The cornerback, any other observations from you, Chris? A couple big-time recruits on campus, too. Yeah, a couple of recruits, uh, New Mexico linebacker Mason Posa, who is the number one prospect in New Mexico. He was on campus, uh, two-time state champion wrestler out of New Mexico. I can't remember the last time USC got a New Mexico recruit. I have to talk to Gerard about that one. but He'll know. It, it he'll know. It probably goes way, way back. But he was on campus. Not a ton of recruits in that aspect, but there was a group from, uh, I believe they're from Utah out here today, including a couple prospects from Australia, mate, down under. From Sorry. Utah by way of Australia. By, by way of Australia, correct. <laughs> Sorry, we just we went over my Australian accent. I thought it was No, I, I did go great. over I, it. I thought it was great. But, yeah, just a couple of recruits on campus. I thought there would actually be more, but, you know, they're definitely saving that for Saturday yeah. when we expect a big group in attendance for that set. And probably even some transfer guys, too, because board was open. They could take visits. But, yeah, not a lot going on. I did witness the linebackers really working on tackling, really working on tackling. Uh, Matt Entz was uh, really emphasizing, you know, wrapping up keeping your body square, not being out of position, and tackling down the lane, which is, you know, something obviously USC struggle with. So hopefully USC fans will get to see better tackling in the spring game because that was not the case last spring game and kind of told a lot about what we were going to see during the 2023 season. I'll never forget, as long as I live, three plays, offense scored in three plays in that spring game last season. Hopefully it'll look a little better defensively on Saturday. After practice, Chris, we heard from Lincoln Riley. We heard from Zach Hansen, like I mentioned. We heard from a few players, including Miller Moss. I asked Lincoln Riley his favorite question, whose stock has improved the most in spring camp? He doesn't really like to single out guys like that, but I really tried hard to get a couple names out of him, and he started with Kamari Ramsey, the safety from UCLA. I think the fact that he was under Danton Lynn a year ago and knows Lynn's system is massive and it makes a lot of sense for him being a spring camp standout. And then Riley talked about how Jacoby Covington is surging. He used the word surging to describe Covington's play. And if he can stay healthy, I've maintained this all camp, I think he can be a really, really good player for USC this fall and potentially be an NFL draft guy if everything goes really, really well. So we'll have to pay attention to that. But really good to see those two players have stood out. Any other takeaways from you on what Riley said 
outside the portal, and then those two guys standing out. He, he mentioned Quinton Joyner. Uh, relatively low-key day from Riley, though. I just want to mention I bought a lot of stock in Jacoby Covington Me too. last spring. Oh. Looked really well in the spring game when he picked off two passes. Thought he was going to be a starter. Was emerging emerging into a starter before he got hurt and missed the rest of the season. Coming back in the holiday bowl, had a pretty good game. So I'm holding on to that stock, baby. I, I agree with you. I think he could be a really, really good player and a guy who becomes an NFL draft pick, kind of like Makai Blackman came when he came over for Colorado. He did mention Dejan Lafitte, who you brought up, the yes. redshirt freshman defensive tackle. USC needs big bodies. Dejan Lafitte is a big body. He was injured last season, so did not play at all. And, you know, uh, Lincoln Riley mentioned that he still looks like a true freshman at times. You see those flashes, but sounds like he's still a little bit away from actually being a contributor and maybe breaking into the rotation. But he'll have an opportunity in the spring game this weekend to showcase himself. Quinn Joyner showcased himself last spring game. Lincoln Riley says this world world of difference from this spring camp, from his first spring camp as a freshman to now. Seems like every day he pops off a big run. So again, buy that Quinn Joyner stock. He is surging right now as potentially a real true breakout candidate for this offense. One guy gets hurt or one guy can't play in that running back room and it's going to be someone needs to get those carries. If it's not Woody Marks, it's probably Quinton Joyner. If one of those guys is out for some reason, then that would elevate Marion Peterson or Brian Jackson even, and we've heard good things about him. I find it hard to believe that as a true freshman he'd really have a huge impact, but never say never. I believe he's only 17 too, so he's not only a true freshman, but he's a really young kid, and we'll see in the spring game. I'm, I'm sure he'll get some reps then. Chris, you talked to Killian O'Connor, the backup center. He was the, or he spoke, excuse me, for the first time this spring, and I was jealous that I didn't get to talk to him because, like you said talking to centers they always give you really good information i think in 2025 he might be the starting center for usc we'll see walk on right now what did he have to say do you know what high school he came from I like santa margarita yeah i just like if you ever see connor just quizzing where random players out of california came from he'll be able to tell you just like that but yeah if you ever want to get a good quote talk to the center they're the usually the smartest guys on the offense besides the quarterback so and sometimes they're smarter than the quarterback so he was good you know a little nervous but i, I enjoyed talking to killian o'connor i wish they let us ask more questions they cut us off pretty short but you know he's just you know he's being humble you know he he's really risen up to the backup center job a very important job and you know he, he spoke highly of you know jonah monheim you know killian o'connor's been playing center longer than jonah monheim is but he's, he was amazed by how quickly Jonah picks up everything it's just like that and he said even if you had thrown Jonah into the center last year he would have been able to make all the calls that's how like cerebral and and good he is and that's how smart he is and that's everyone gushes about being him being a leader and all that but yeah the cerebral side Jonah has that down just getting the technique and everything with the center position and as Lincoln Riley mentioned he's ahead of schedule so I'm excited to see both of those guys in the spring game uh, in the Coliseum. And, you know, I, I think you're right. I think Killian O'Connor could push to be a uh, starter and maybe even a scholarship player. He confirmed that he's not on scholarship, but he has to be the guy, like, if you're yeah. if, if there's a scholarship available, it's probably going to go to him because he's put in so much work and he's risen up the, the depth chart. So, you know, if you're a USC fan, I would say you would, should hope that uh, Killian O'Connor gets a scholarship because he's putting in all the work that a Trojan should. USC, I believe, has six open scholarships right now. Yeah, right now the number is six by our math. I'm not great at math, but I'm pretty confident they have six spots right now. And that can fluctuate if more players enter the portal, and USC, of course, will recruit out of the portal. I wonder when the dust settles in a couple weeks now, maybe O'Connor gets on scholarship sooner than later. Last year, I, I forget when it happened, but Dennis Lynch went on scholarship, and maybe O'Connor would be next in line at uh, as a walk-on, I, I could certainly see that. We also heard from Miller Moss today, Chris, Elijah Page. He pretty much said he's the left tackle, which I think we all knew, but it was nice to hear it. And I wonder in the transfer portal if USC maybe will pull someone from the portal who could play left tackle, maybe a right tackle. I'm just wondering what the offensive line looks like when it's all said and done. And I asked Page about that, and he said, I just got to focus on doing what I do every day, competing, and I'm not really worried about that. Very diplomatic answer from him. Final thoughts on anyone else we talked to today? Yeah, barring them getting a high-level elite left tackle candidate, I would assume Elijah Page, game one, LSU, Las Vegas, is going to be starting at left tackle. You know, he's put in the work. He looks the part. He looks he like the left tackle of the future. Again, he's still young. So some you'll, there'll be some growing pains, let's be honest. But if, unless they don't get a high-level tackle that can play left tackle, and they probably will bump 
Elijah to right tackle. Let him get comfortable over there for easing him in more to left tackle. I'm assuming he's going to be starting. But again, we'll have to see what happens in the portal in the next couple weeks. He's Chris Trevino. I'm Connor Morissette. This has been Instant Analysis. We'll be back on Thursday for more. Stick with USAFootball.com for full coverage of the rest of spring camp and everything from the transfer portal. We'll see you Thursday.